Well, there's two things. Now, first of all, these changes take time. But once you understand that there's a lot of inefficiencies in the supply chain, you end up having a return. And, uh, and I guess that's the way it needs to be sustainable. In one of the sessions, they were talking about the fact that they were giving some funding to, to the producers. But in the end, this was just uh, kind of a philanthropic uh, money and their their lifestyle was not really changing and uh, what what we think is if if you have the right practices and we have seen that in different geographies with the precise use of inputs like fertilizer with the right seed you can see yields that really make the whole landscape approach sustainable of course you have to take pilot projects and then look for replicability and scalability. But in the commodities we deal with, which are the staple commodities that, in essence, are the underlying of, of the world diet, it's very important to have enough yields. I'm going to talk about this specific project in India, which is interesting because we first had to work in the ground with the different alliances we, we form. Uh, with NGOs that know the local communities. First to convince them that there's a way of changing the way they live um, and, and they can be more productive. So um, we have already over 25,000 women working in agriculture. And uh, while it took some time for them to, to realize that this new thing was gonna be beneficial, as soon as they see the, the yields increase and, uh, and they see that in their pockets, it, it just permeates very easily. So the, the, the difficult part is to convince. Well, I think the, the supply chain is truly vast, and I think there's changes in all of the pieces. Um, just I'm going to refer uh, first into the inputs. Uh, there's definitely a lot of change in seeds and also in fertilizer. I think fertilizer is worth mentioning because uh, the farmers were not used to apply fertilizer precisely, and that would give a lot of more pollution also to the water. Now they realize that there's different components and different formulas, so they apply less fertilizer, saving money, saving greenhouse gases, and producing more. So this basically brings us to a less is more kind of equation, which is phenomenal. Uh, in transportation, yet there's still to be done. Um, but there's many initiatives, like the Sustainable Shipping Initiative, that has worked. Um, and then we go to the consumer side, where uh, we're also uh, looking into products that have additional nutritional values uh, in order to really make it more of a nutrient economy instead of, of more quality instead of quantity on the diets. So we, we've seen enormous change uh, from from the ground up uh, and, and in the farmer perception as well, they are much more into phones and into communications and want to talk to the private sector and see what the price is. So they're much more engaged than, than you know, 20 years ago. Well, I think this is a very good forum to see a mix of different sectors. Uh, I did see from the, from the hands raised that there were investors a couple of corporates as well, and uh, NGOs and public sector. So I think that uh, there's yet a lot to be done in the, in the silo mentality. Uh, we, as private sector, really look more into results, while what I've seen in the public is it looks more into budgets. So we need to reconcile those two in order to really develop sustainable supply chains. And, um, and I really think this is uh, a very good forum to be able to get new connections and, uh, and make the, the effort together because we are convinced that no one can really do the thing by themselves. We need to focus on what we're experts and get an alliance with the rest.